Hello everybody and welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. Today we're going to cold smoke 37 blocks of cheese. And we're going to do this on the Weber Smoky Mountain and on the Weber Kettle. The eight blocks of the Kraft cheese you see over to the left, those are my brothers. He tried some of my smoked cheese and said, man, you got to make me some of that. I said, go buy the cheese and bring it to me and it's on. Also a subscriber, his name's Tom. He also was interested in some, so he brought me a couple blocks of cheese to smoke for him. And in the previous clip, I'd like to mention that I took a photo of those blocks of cheese on the cooling racks because that's how I'm going to keep these babies in order. Now here's a five rack system off the WSM. Most of you know that this is a highly modified WSM. And for those of you that are new to the channel, could please go back and check my previous videos to see how I created this. I also took a picture of this rack system with the cheese on it for a reference because you want to make sure when you put it on the smoker that you put it on the same way you take it off. These blocks of cheese you see here are going on the Weber kettle. Here I'm going to be using the amazing maize and over here you'll see that I'm using Traeger's applewood pellets. All right let's go ahead and get these babies lit up and all I'm going to use here is my torch and all you got to do is light the pellets for about anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds just long till you see a flame let that flame go for about another 10 seconds and blow it out and she'll start up all right about a minute has went by so i'm going to go ahead and place one of these inside the wsm and the other one is going to go on the back side of the weber kettle all right let's go ahead and get this weber kettle set up so all i'm going to do is place that cooling rack with the craft cheese and set it right there in the center and what you want to make sure is when you grab the rack, just hold it so you remember the position it was when you put it on the grill so you can keep track of it. Then what you want to do is put the lid on and make sure your bottom vent and top vent is wide open at all times. Just remember when you put the Weber kettle lid on to be sure that that top vent is opposite of the smoke. So here I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the WSM and go ahead and get that cheese put on. Again, just make sure you remember which way you picked it up and position it on the grill so you don't lose track of the cheese. Because trust me, when you go to vacuum seal these cheeses, you're going to want to make sure that they're in the same order that you put them on. All right, here I'm going to go ahead and assemble this WSM. And again, make sure that you have all your vents wide open. And you, you don't need to use this dual vent lid that I have. Uh, if you have a stock WSM, you can use it and just make sure you put whatever cheese you could fit on your racks that's fine i just this is how this setup works with that lid so that's is what i'm using and i'm going to have them both wide open as well and as you can see here i was a little tall on my rack the top rack there so the wonderful thing about this rack system is it's adjustable the other thing that's nice about this is you could take the bottom rack of this rack system and the top rack and stack them together and use them in a Weber kettle. All right, well now that I got it all adjusted, I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on and we are going to set a timer for four hours. Yes, four hours is all you need for this. The current temperatures are 41 degrees, which is just fine for cold smoking cheese. All right, so here what I did is I took a photocopy of the cheese that's on the Weber kettle and here's a photograph of the cheese that was laid out on the island for the WSM. And again, another reason why I took those pictures is for one, the orientation of the cheese. For two, I'm going to cut those, each individual block out of that picture. And after I vacuum seal, I'm going to take those and take some packaging tape and tape them over the top. All right. Well, since the Weber kettle has such a small design, what I like to do is take the cheese and flip it. And take the smoker box that's in the rear of the Weber kettle and move it to the front. That'll give us some nice even smoke throughout all this cheese. I am not going to do this in the WSM because the last batch of cheese that I made in it worked out perfect. So here I'm just going to slide this back. You want to rotate it to where it's the smoke is now facing the front. And just go ahead and put your rack back on. And yeah, don't twist it. Just put it back on. And then slide the cooling rack to the rear of the kettle. Just be sure when you put your lid back on that you rotate it. You want your top vent 
opposite of where the smoke is coming from. Whoa, what do we have here? Looks like we have a drone. And hopefully in the near future, we could do some sky cam videos. I can also do it live off Facebook and I could do it live in the group. This should be fun. This drone is registered with the FAA and I am not in any no flight zones. I write up a lot on the rules and regulations, so we should be fine. All right, well, our four hours is up, and I'd like for you guys to look at some of the color changes in the cheese. And I also want to show you that maze. Amazing. They claim you get 12-hour burn out of one of them, and they are correct. Because as you can see, there's four hours went by, and one row has burnt completely. So just kind of getting a good look at the cheese here. And here's the cheese in the WSM. And here I'm going to show you how many pellets we burned in here. And as you can see, the same amount. I highly recommend these mazes for cold smoke and cheese. Some people use the tube, and that's fine too. I went ahead and pulled all the cheese off the grill. And as you can see here, this one here is from the Weber kettle. I'm going to go ahead and start clipping them images out of that picture. And I'm going to do the same with the five rack system that you're about to see right now. I'm telling you guys, if you've never tried cold smoke and cheese, it is so easy to do. It is not hard. I have one other video on cold smoke and cheese, and I'm telling you right now, it, it is the simplest thing you could do, and it's very rewarding at the end. There's probably 25 people that's tried my recipe, and there was only one that didn't like it, and that was only because she didn't like cheese, and yes, that's you, Tanner. That's my son's girlfriend. All right, now it's time to vacuum seal all this cheese and get it ready for the refrigerator. In my opinion, these food saver Ziploc bags are the way to go when you're cold smoking cheese because you can always open it, take what you want, and then vacuum seal it back up. So, did you notice how I cut those blocks of cheese out of that picture and taped them onto these Ziploc bags? Looks pretty nice, don't it? Well, here you'll see that these are regular vacuum seal bags because this is our personal cheese. I really don't care too much how it looks. As long as the labels are on, that's all we need. So there you have it. Cold smoked cheese by Joe's Barbecue House. Now, once you put these in the refrigerator, you want to wait at least two weeks before you try it out. But I promise you the results in the end will be fabulous. So if you like what you saw or learned anything today, please subscribe. Hit that like button. Comment below your thoughts. Share to your friends. Hit that bell notification. Thanks and have a great day.